Hey, mathematicians. Sorry about the audio on the first attempt at recording. Hopefully this works out better. Okay, so let's do it. We have two sides. We have a lot of mixed numbers that we're changing to decimals here. So our first problem, Mauricio's class had a pizza party. They ate seven and one fourths pizzas. So we need to figure out what decimal is the same as seven and one fourth. So seven is a whole number and one fourth or one quarter is our fraction, which means that we are going to be looking for something that has seven holes. Like you can see the seven in this one's place. That one has seven holes. That one has seven holes. This has zero holes. That is not even one whole pizza. It's less than a pizza. And we know that their class ate more than one pizza. So we're choosing between these three options. You have two choices when you're looking at a mixed number like this seven and one fourths. Option one is you can just say, okay, what is one fourth in decimal? I know that my first number is going to be seven and then my decimal point. So I'm just looking for my last numbers after my decimal point, in which case you can divide one divided by four. Our numerator is always going in. If you have one dollar, can you buy a four dollar item? No, you cannot. So we put a zero. We put a decimal and raise it to the roof and another zero. If you have ten dollars, can you buy a four dollar item? Yes. Can you buy another four dollar item? Yes. Can you buy another one? Mm, nope, that would be twelve dollars. Too much. So two, that's eight dollars you spent with two remaining. We're going to add another zero inside our division house, not outside, not in our quotient, not our answer, just in the dividend, the number that's inside our division house. We're going to bring that zero down. If you have $20, you can buy four, eight, 12, 16, 25 items. So you are looking for the answer that ends in a decimal point and a 25. It can be a little confusing because it looks like it should start with zero, but in reality, we're just changing that part right here, this fractional bit. We know that we have seven holes and then this little extra bit, so we end up with A. Mina bought two and three-fifths pounds of flour from the bulk section at HEB. What decimal is equivalent? So option one is you can say, okay, I know it's going to be two point something, and I'm only figuring out that decimal amount. Or option two is you can change your entire mixed number into an improper fraction and then divide that. That will give you your whole answer in the entirety. You're gonna have your decimal amount and the whole number amount. So let's try it that way. Five times two is 10 plus three is 13. So two and three fifths is the same as 13 fifths. Always the numerator goes inside and the denominator goes outside. Five goes into one zero time. 5 goes into 13, 5, 10, 15 is too big, 2 times. That's 10. I have a remainder of 3. Now I'm going to add my decimal point, raise it to the roof, and add another 0 because 13 is the same as 13 and nothing extra. But now I can bring that 0 down and say, hmm, how many 5s make 30? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 6 of them. And we have no remainder. Don't need to add any more zeros because I'm not trying to get rid of a remainder. I have a remainder of zero. I'm done. So here, Mina bought two and six tenths pounds. Pounds, you can write out the whole word or you can abbreviate it as LBS. Pounds of flour. And there's a weird empty space, but, you know, we're going to flip to the back side of our homework. Rosie's puppy tail is two and three eighths inches long. Two and three eighths. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 3 is 17, 18, 19. We have 19 eighths, which means that we are saying 19 divided by 8. If you remember in class, I told you that anything with a denominator of 8, like this one, is going to end up having three decimal, three numbers after the decimal point. So your answer is going to end up in the thousandths place. Please do not stop dividing until you get to the thousandths place. That decimal will terminate, will end after that point. This next one, this one third, will not terminate. So one third is a very common fraction that you will see a lot. Oh, there go my lights. Um, it's not gonna, it's not gonna end. It's gonna keep going and going and going. First of all, one third of an apple pie. I wish it was three whole pies, but no. We're choosing between less than a whole pie, less than a whole pie, less than a whole pie. 
3 goes into 1 zero times. I add my decimal. I raise it to the roof. I add as many zeros as I need to inside my division house to keep the pattern going. So do that division. You're deciding, is it 3 tenths? Is it 33 hundreds? Or remember this in option C, this bar means, is it 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3 repeating forever and ever and ever? You're going to finish that one. Art has completed 9 tenths. Oh, it's already in tenths. We don't even need to divide it. It's in the right place value. You can just write that as a decimal. Oscar drank 1 and 8 thousandths liters of soda yesterday. Okay, so starting, it's more than a liter of soda. So it could be this 1 and a little bit. It could be this 1 and a little bit. It could be this 1 and a little bit. It could not be D because that is less than 1 whole liter of soda. We know he drank more than that. So 8 is in the thousandths place. We're going to write 8 as a fraction over 1,000. And then you have two choices. Choice number one is you can simplify 8 over 1,000. Think about, hmm, okay, what, what do I know about both 8 and 1,000? They're both even numbers. I could probably divide them by 2. That's also probably not their greatest common factor. I don't know. Dividing, not my favorite thing. Option number two is... You can look at your multiple choice because you already have the answer somewhere here. And you can try to figure out, okay, well, 8 times what equals 8? Eight? 8 times 1. Does 100 times 1 equal 1,000? Uh, no, that means A is not my answer. 8 times what number equals, I'm sorry, 2 times what number equals 8? 2 times 4. Well, does 4 250s make 1,000? I don't know, you tell me. 4 times 2 equals 8. Does 5 times 2 equal 10,000? So that's how you could figure it out as well. You don't actually need to simplify. If it's a multiple choice, you can check your answers. Which decimal is equivalent to the fraction 2 and 4 sixths? 2 and something, 2 and something, 2 and something. I don't know. Maybe it's not here. Maybe it's not. Sometimes you can cross off an answer choice if it says like 0 and something. 4 sixths, you could simplify. Or you could just divide right away. I personally, I'm not going to simplify. If you wanted to, it would simplify to one third. You're going to get the same answer whether you do four and six or one and a third or one and three. And you run the risk of simplifying wrong. So I'd rather just stick with this. Six goes into four zero times. I add my decimal. I raise it to the roof. I add a zero. Six goes into 40. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. 42, nope, too big, 6 times, that's 36, I have a remainder of 4, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm already starting to see a pattern, mm -hmm. okay, so at this point, even if I'm not done with my problem, I know I'm choosing either between B or not here, because there's a 6 in my tenths place, that had a 4 in my tenths place, that had 2 in my tenths place, neither of those are going to be the option. If you keep going, is your answer just straight not up there, or is it repeating sixes? You can choose between those two. Last but not least, seven. And then we need to figure out the three quarters because they all start with seven holes. What's three quarters of an hour? You can think of it like money. How, much, how many cents is three quarters? Or you can divide three divided by four to find your final answer. 